Being a minority is your superpower, um, whether that's male, female, uh, whatever your pronoun is, whatever your race is, um, that's your superpower. And understanding, um, again, going back to your why and your ability to articulate that superpower, um, I think you all in this room coming from a sports background have a leg up because sports people in sports background you know, have experience on teams and, and working in a very diverse setting. And so to be able to tell that story to a future employer that you've excelled in leadership amongst multiple races or multiple genders, and this is the example, whatever that may be in your, you know, whatever sports you're in, and this is how I can bring that to your organization. That's why I'm saying it's a superpower because quote unquote regular students don't have that experience black white or indifferent to be able to say I was in a locker room with Asian black white Hispanic people and we all came together for a common cause and uh, you know accomplish our shared goals so it's a superpower if you embrace it and if you understand your personal why it's hard though I echo you Kendall it's hard it is hard but like, as you see, uh, what Chris Rogers told us all is, hey, dress on this as if you would a day at work. And so for me, uh, you know, my nine to five, if you will, at Google, like this is how I'm coming. You know what I mean? I'm coming with it. And that's only because I'm confident in and I have enough reps in being myself and communicating who that self is to, you know, whoever. Hey. So that yeah. yeah, really quick, you know, just to, I, I love this topic because I think all of us as professionals and aspiring professionals, this is going to be a big deal and this is what we're going to have to go through, right? And to Michael's point, you got to bring your authentic self. It is our superpower, but it is going to take a lot of stamina and resilience. I like, I struggle with this, with this person, right? Like I say, being from the hood, coming to corporate America, being a Kappa, like, how you cold switch, right? Like I, they saw me three days ago, I had a little fro, but I know that's not the perception that I want to portray to y'all. Cause being in corporate America, it's tough. It's, it's like, you almost feel like you selling out a little bit, right? Like how do you still keep your identity and stay true to who you are? And then you, but it's also part of you growing and, 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 and evolving, right? So that may be when it comes down to choosing your friends. Let's go with um, social media right now. We know we're in a time of social media. We always have our phones in our hands. And I just feel like it's just such a way of life right now. So how is how important is social media in sports right now? Um, coming from a, a traditional brand like Under Armour, you know, social media is super important because it's authenticity. And so, you know, now more than ever, you know, the consumer wants to connect with a athlete or a influencer or a, you know, movie star in an authentic way. And I think that social media allows that window into a person's uh, life in an authentic way. So social media is super important in how you become a brand and tell that story. Don, can I invite Don to speak about uh, the creativity and creative solutions around getting Mark Ingram to become a minority owner of a team and how that probably wouldn't have happened um, the way it did if this was pre Black Lives Matter and George Floyd. But just going touching back on the uh, Black Lives Matter, I don't think that helped Mark get in that position or helped anyone. I think that was more of a relationships as we all talked about relationships. We worked on it for three years for Mark to be in the position that he was. A lot of guys don't like to golf, right? Mark is a golfer. So those deals happen on the golf course, right? Um, you know, a lot of guys want to go to the nightclub. You know, I wasn't a guy that went to the nightclub. I was a guy that wanted to know what the, the owner I wanted to talk to the owner. I wanted to have those conversations, not with the scout, but I wanted to have the conversations with the owner. Our next part would be, um, how do you handle being the minority in your industry? Coming also from a company similar to Unarmor, like Adidas is very, predominantly very white. And even more so, it's a German company. So the headquarters is actually in Germany. So saying that it's it's the lens that they're, that that the company itself is looking through 
is very from the white German lens. Um, and it is, I mean, Adidas still is, you know, definitely has the black athletes, but they still need people that actually can connect and work with those black athletes and actually make them feel comfortable when they have meetings and actually can uh, tell the details to their story versus having to guess from not actually having that experience. So similar to what Kendall said, just having having the, uh, the um, experience to share and to be unfiltered, but also to, um, you know, to be, uh, uh, to be kind of, to stand for those black athletes. Real friends, right? <laughs> hey, but you know what, the times are changing. I think George yeah. Floyd and what's going on with diversity, equity and inclusion, I think the, you know, the, the landscape and the, the blueprint that was the past is actually gonna be the past. You know, now with, with COVID and the pandemic, you know, athleisure and, and, and casual clothes are going to be a little bit more acceptable. To your point, Chris, though, I think what uh, Stephen A. said to you earlier is projection can become reality. And if you want to get started, you got to make sure that you play the game without feeling, out, without feeling like you're going to sell out at least a little bit. And I'm not going to, you know, and please take this the right way. I really do think in order for us all to to survive this business as minorities, there's going to be an element of selling out. You know, I definitely think that's not a blanket um, for all industries. So CPA firms, you don't want to see a broke accountant. So I'm going to have a suit on every day. It's just about with people's money. You're just going to want somebody <laughs> to have that suit on every day. We just got out of wearing navy blue, black, and gray. So this blue, my mom would have a fit. <laughs> But and when my brother was home over um, over all this COVID, I was like, Gabe, we're going to get a haircut. You got a meetings like this? <laughs> she was just distraught. But it's different times and how you're comfortable and how we are wanting to be portrayed. This question came from Wesley Bowers. If you want to unmute yourself and ask, ask your question. The question I had is just, you know, we were talking about branding. So I kind of just wanted you guys to speak on, like, what are some ways someone could start, you know, building a brand kind of from the ground up? with not having a lot of following, but you, and then using the uh, any platform to kind of build a resume that would be appetizing to companies and organizations that will allow them to, you know, open doors and have those opportunities to continue to, to grow their brand. Identify what you're passionate about outside of football. Understand your why. Show yourself doing what you're passionate about and the, pe the people in the audience will come, you know, but. The hardest part for a lot of athletes is actually developing a passion outside of what ball they dribble or catch. And if you can find something outside of it and then find that meshing point, that's gonna be you know, the winning formula for, for you. My name is Ray. I'm from California, San Jose, California. And I learned um, about like how to use social media as a tool to leverage your, your brand. Um, I think I was in the breakout room with uh, Michael Peterson and uh, your name was Courtney and they talked about like using social media as a tool to uh, leverage your brand and like really put yourself out there and connect with people. Cause like in this day and age, like people really want, like the consumers really want to connect with the athletes and like uh, the people they see on TV and they look up to. So yeah, that's something I learned. Uh